Could this be the tipping point for Bill Maher? That's the question you'll ask yourself because this next clip with Patrick Bet David may have just served as a vital reality check for Bill for the true dividing line between American politics. Mandates or choice? Freedom or safety? Trump or Biden? I honestly think this is a conversation that traverses these surface binaries and the petty politics of today because PBD may have just given us the most credible metric for who deserves your vote and support. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's get into it. You're supporting Biden, though. Of course, because we only get two choices. I mean, what is so hard to understand about, about bad and worse? They forced America to take the vaccine bill. 70% Americans took the vaccine and they didn't want to take we're, it. We're, a lot of them didn't want to take it. Wait, wait, wait a second. It. When did the vaccine come about? Under Biden? Uh, no, two, under Trump. No, no, it didn't. It came two days after election was over with. Two days after election was over with, uh, Pfizer announced it was not under under Trump. Oh, they intentionally yeah, kept you're the right. vaccine you're right. after the election, so they gave the victory That's to That's right. But, uh, Trump, Biden. but Trump was not anti. Trump was like, I created the vaccine. I don't disagree with you. I agree with it's you. A, Oh, he I takes see. it as a victory. I'm, I'm on the same page but, with you. Okay. Actually, both are off by several months because the first FDA approved shot actually became available well into the Biden administration in August of 2021. And even in the harsh year of the pandemic in 2020, almost half of all Americans polled said they would refuse the shot even if it was free. There was hardly a greater political wedge in recent times than how far should be the trade-off between collective security and individual liberty. That's exactly why a black swan event like a pandemic sets the ultimate precedent for how sacred your rights really are. Right now, over 230 million people in the United States have received the shot. That's 70%, which is considered the minimum threshold to achieve herd immunity. But all else aside, can anyone question the fact that this percentage was achieved in abeyance of individual choice and liberty? And what does a test like this reveal about how secure or flimsy our rights truly are? That's the deeper political question left hanging in the event that a test of our liberty and autonomy repeats in the future, especially with the digital dystopia that we're quickly building around us. Can I right? just ask you a simple yeah. yes or no question? Yeah. Well, not exactly yes or no, but who are you voting for? I'm voting for whoever allows me to make decisions more and not somebody that what? decides what's good for me or not. Bro, we're not in a debate here. No, no, the, the, left, what, the what? left- I asked you a yes or the vaccine. No. Wait a second. The state of we, California we, and we, the industry you're in force you to take the vaccine. So you don't know who you're voting for? I'm voting for whoever allows me to have more freedom with the choices I make. And, we, and you don't know that yet? It's definitely not gonna be Biden. Well, then it would be Trump, wouldn't it? If it's between the two choices? What? But look at you. you Are you kidding me? I, it's not even a close call, by the, the way. That That's a test we never got to see because despite Donald Trump's shaky stance on the jab and the booster shots, he's been a vocal critic of the idea of mandating them. But it's hard to predict a character like Trump, hence Patrick's hesitance to take a name for who he would support. And I totally agree with that. And you know what? Sometimes it's just the lesser of two evils and it's easier to pick out the leader that you don't want than the one that you do. Here's something interesting. Bill Maher himself has been a bit of a paradox on the issue over the years because his initial enthusiasm for the shot and mandates turned into skepticism for their efficacy, even to the point that some publications started calling on CNN to de-platform anti-vaxxer Bill Maher for comparing mask mandates to tyranny, that makes one thing clear, there's certainly an implicit understanding at the back of his mind that mandates are a critical balancing game between security and liberty. And it's this fact among other hot button issues that has made him somewhat fall out of favor with some of his liberal friends in the media making Patrick willing to engage in the conversation in the first place. You know why I say that? There's been no shortage of people on the political left of this issue that have even refused to acknowledge the trade-off. Take Sam Harris, for example, who dug his heels on a hardline position on the idea of medical mandates, but not before concocting a fictional scenario that has to take the question to an absurd extreme to prove his point. Dial up the, the deadliness of the pathogen. You know, give us something like, you know, airborne Ebola that incubates for a month, you don't, you don't know you have it, and you're, you walk around spreading it, and it's got 
you know, a 75% fatality rate and it's mostly killing kids, no one gets to make that choice anymore. I mean, then literally the, the cops come in and vaccinate you. That's not the kind of world you want to live in. And that's not the kind of dystopian and authoritarian government that you want to rule over your everyday life that even has that kind of power over your body in the first place. The current regime did nothing like this, instead choosing to use inconvenience and social isolation as a way to goad people into getting the shot. But it's still a revelation to see that there are people who don't see any line at all for where your notion of collective security stops and individual autonomy begins. Bill Maher's clearly not someone that's far gone on the issue, hence his very insightful question by Patrick Bet David next. To me, I'm voting based on values. I'm not voting based okay, on- Okay, but we know what the values are of Biden and Trump and their and their policies right. are. We know everything the about left them. The left is about force, the right is about choice. I, I don't wanna be forced Again, to have to do something I don't wanna do. I get that. I'm. I, you seem to think that that is the sunum bonum of all political issues. It is a very important one to me. There are other ones. Such as what? Uh, what's, what's above force versus, versus freedom? Crazy person in the White House? According to who? Again, well, it's my opinion. That's it's right. My vote. I don't know if he meant that as flippant sarcasm, but I hope he sees it for the slippery slope that it is. I'd actually rephrase Patrick's characterization there because it's quite simply the fact that the left puts the collective over the individual, and that's precisely where the notion of justified force comes from on an issue like this. On the other side of the political aisle, people's choice and liberty are sacred, and any talk of sidestepping it would be taken off the table first. Things like the vaccine are where we start to disagree. Um, and it, to me, it's even more fine than that, because there are pathogens that could potentially cause us to really need to make everyone take it. I was just reading that they are, because of global warming, uh, the permafrost, which has not been thought out for, you know, eons, is gonna melt. And there are organisms there yeah. <laughs> that go back so far that we have, the humans have no contact with them. So zero resistance. So this would be like the Satan bug if it got out which is very possible that it could. Sounds oddly similar to what Sam Harris just said, but if something like that were to actually happen, it's safe to say that the last four years have not been a great practice run for it. From the trust deficit produced, whether rightly or wrongly, to the corporations and big pharma that lobbied governments over the mandates, we are anything but prepared for another black swan event like COVID. From reports of giants like Pfizer lobbying the US government against low-cost immunization solutions, to the many events in the prior decades that eroded public trust in Big Pharma and the WHO, people's perception of the issue has become dangerously skewed towards skepticism. It was actually on Bill Maher's show that we saw one of the greatest summations of the trust deficit that has been produced and it came from Russell Brand. The pandemic created at least 40 new far, big pharma billionaires. Pharmaceutical corporations like Moderna and Pfizer made $1,000 of profit every second from the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine. More than well. two thirds of Congress received campaign funding from pharmaceutical companies in the 2020 election. Pfizer chairman Albert Baller told Time Magazine in July 2020 that his company was developing a COVID vaccine for the good of humanity, not for money. And of course, Pfizer made $100 but, billion dollars okay. in profit right. in 2022. Right. As always, greed and duplicity muddies the water on a vital health issue for the whole world as we enter an era where we might see more such global emergencies. But it's clear that for someone like Patrick Bet David, the most logical conclusion is to devolve that choice and responsibility down to the individual level. That's the only way to make sure some semblance of individual rights that this country stands for can remain secure.